Yeah, first and foremost, guys, just before anything, uh, Plex just hit the command of the evening. Um, it's, I'm not taking it down anytime soon. It'll be here for all streams going forward. But um, please, especially you know, especially tonight, especially in these next days, weeks, and stuff like that. Uh, exclamation point, Brody. We'll we'll just we'll just link you right to both his AEW store, which will support him his family, um, and then CM Punk. Uh, if you haven't heard, uh, CM Punk has declared the next month that any proceeds from his pro wrestling tees store will also go uh, to to John's family, as well as uh, EC3 on his own private store has released a memorial T shirt. Uh, right there as well so same thing all proceeds all profits going directly to uh to john's family his wife and his kids um and everything so that just you know housekeeping will uh please use that type that in you know all night tonight and everything like that whenever um and our, our mods will will pop it in every so often as well yeah i don't know Forgive me if I'm not as eloquent <laughs> as I normally am. It's just, it's hard. It's the last few days have been hard to find the words. And you, you go from, um, just yeah, crippling, cripplingly sad, you know, in moments to, you, you join in with, with the brother and you try to bring up some of the, the best moments and you laugh and like they're going to do tomorrow night, you try to have, find some things to celebrate, of course. But it's it's such a volley back and forth for those of us who knew him. And I can only imagine for his family, he has the... Guys, I can't even, I can't even tell you. He has the strongest, most badass, fun wife one of the best human another two amazing humans find each other funny how that works right but like you have no idea like if any of you by chance have happened to meet her when you know she's been at one of these meet and greets or sometimes she's was with him at uh and different uh events and stuff like that so she's just incredible his children um are ridiculous and funny and just goofs just like he was and oh god that's the hardest part is just saying like was I still can't get used to saying was it's very uncomfortable for me except it's funny it's it's funny how many people have said this, but you know, in wrestling, um, it's it's hard. A lot of us know you're you're gone so much that I think some, you know we leave wrestling on the road, sort of thing, right? We leave it on the road, and <clears throat> we're so we're all brothers and sisters and everything. We're so close for four or five days in a row. And then you go home and like that's sometimes we don't we don't talk to each other. And it's it's solely it's solely because just yeah, we're with each other so much it's like it there's that it there's a classic case of one of those like, you know, hey, I don't I don't talk to somebody for six months, but then you pick him up and text him and it's just boom, it's back into jokes and brother talk and all this stuff. Um because you form these bonds so intensely. It, in this job, in this career, in this life, that you you end up doing, you know, six years worth of friendship in the course of a year. And so, yeah, so you can do that with a lot of people. And, um, but even that, you know, there was only a, probably a handful of guys who I would even reach out to every few months, you know, especially since, you know, being released from WWE, I keep in touch with, again, I can count on one hand the number of people 
but probably both in WWE, like and AEW, the two major companies, the two biggest companies, I could probably count on one hand the number of people who I tr- like stay in touch with it, e- even just every couple of weeks or every couple of months and just say, what's up, say, you know, Hey, whatever like that. And John was one of those people. And it sounds, uh, from the like of it, what's it that a lot of people had those stories. A lot of people had that relationship or if, you know, if not that, then closer ones, he was, he was a lot of people's, like so many people's friend. It's crazy. It's absolutely insane. Um, you see a lot of people uh, mentioning like, you know, hey, we, we lost a good one. You know what I mean? Like, cause you know, this, this entertainment business, this ran, especially wrestling, you know, it can be, it, it, Let's face it, it can, have, it can be chock full of assholes at, at times. You know what I mean? There's egos and people can turn into pricks real fast and all this stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, and so, but to find somebody like, so to be one of the good ones, is it's like the ultimate like brother compliment. But like, John, the thing is like, it wasn't, he's not like one of the good ones. He's like, He's the best of us. Do you know what I mean? Like the best of us. Um, I remember. So Shaw and I were originally, you know, not too long ago, um, considering having kids be fair. We're not, we're still not sure, you know, life is, Life is strange and we have things we want to do, blah, blah, blah. That's not the point. But um, so a, a while back, we were considering it. And I always, especially while wrestling full time, um, I always kind of worried. You know, when she, she grew up, obviously, in a wrestling household with her dad. And, like, while she loved and, uh, you know, loved what he did and, like, all this stuff. It, I She would talk about how hard it was on her having a dad especially how busy he was. I mean, he was cra- He was everywhere on everything. Um, and so I always kind of wondered, I was like, oh, is that fair to bring a kid in, in, into that? And I am, I'm other friends of mine had had kids, but I just, I didn't, I wasn't sure if I could, I was like, I don't, I don't want to be a, a shitty dad. I don't want to be a wrestler dad. Who's not there and isn't attentive enough. And, all that stuff. I was really scared about that. Um, but the one example who always, and that luckily there have been, there have since that time, there have been several more who have come along, but like from day one, cause he's, he was a dad since day one. I knew him right when he came to FCW it was right after little Brody was born. And, uh, just watching that. It was just like, he just he just showed me not and not directly not like oh yeah you just do you do this he wasn't teaching it's what he wasn't actually like teach but just in what he did and the way he spoke about and the, when i got to know his wife and everything like that you just saw it in action and when you met, when you met little brody when you met his you meet his kids you, you you see you see the the fruits of his of his labor of his of his work work and of his of his parenting and everything so i mean of all the amazing things john did could do would do all the all the all the funny stuff all the friendship and everything like the first thing of all the things basically he he can inspire in you and everything like that um that was that was the first one that was the first thing that stuck out to me. And if, as, as you see and read and watch all these things, people post, I think you, the, that's the theme that I think everybody could tell. Like God, every, you see it in every single post. Um, that like almost like very few people, 
at least in the business, are talking about how great a wrestler he was. I mean, it's, it was like that goes without saying. But if you knew him, goddamn, family, 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 and uh, the ultimate, it, 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 yeah, our, uh, Creed shared an up, up, down, down kind of remembrance uh, tribute thing today on Instagram, and that like, God, that was just such a sliver of just the backstage kind of uh, antics and attitude. It was so uh, ultimate shit stir, ultimate ball buster. Um, it is. And you know what? It's you know, the funny, what made him one of my favorite people is because, so me, I am the ultimate at, uh, <laughs> I like, so I'm the ultimate like self deprecator, right? Like that's my go-to humor because I was a shy kid and not, you know, a very not confident kid. And so I gained power through just breaking myself down, right? Self-deprecating. So John would do that all the time. And God, he would always, he'd always joke about how he was washed up wrestler. Uh, he was uh, he was untrained as, as a professional wrestler. Totally, you know, he's coming in here basically untrained. He never got proper training. Uh, doesn't know what the hell he's doing in there. Um Anytime you would say like, oh man, you wish you were able to do the things he was doing is, like, oh, you know what I mean? Like he was like, oh, he, uh, you don't, you don't, you don't want my, you don't want my, my lame ass career, blah, 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 blah. Uh, no. So he was the ultimate, he was a self deprecator too, but then he would also flip it on you and like play this, like play up like uh, this arrogant kind of prick. <laughs> like, and again, you see it in those up, up, down, down clips. I'm just like. Clint making up stories about used to be, you know, playing quarterback and college football, which he, I don't, he never did. Uh, and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. It was just, he would flip this switch from like self deprecating, breaking him down. And then to being like this, like faux cocky prick. And it was, uh, it was so, it was so funny the way he would mess with Braun and Bray in the white, like, holy crap. Just to egg those guys on. It was so funny. So funny. Like the, re- the re- I don't know that the whole, that whole group of people is like a ridiculous group of people, but he, <laughs> it was so funny. Um, <laughs> You always, well, when he came on to Zoplex, when he came on up, up, down, down. Yeah. You knew it was going to kick off because he was going to scream. He was probably, here's the thing. He was going to sweat. I, I swear to God, he sweat more playing Nidhogg than he did in the ring most nights. Not all nights, but most nights. <laughs> um, He was probably going to take his shirt off and just sit there. Hairy chested and, uh, my God, <laughs> constantly messing with Claudio too. those, those two, that's, that's a subtle duo that you probably not weren't, you know, wouldn't be sure about. Like, you know, about all the Wyatts and stuff like that, but Claudio was one of his riding buddies and oh my God, holy crap. You talk about like not being afraid to like piss anyone. And the funny thing he has like this being part of the Wyatts, being part of the bludgeon brothers, all this up, these very kind of heavy, badass, serious acts he was in, but talk about never turning down an opportunity to have fun in a house show. Is that God damn it. That's what house shows were for, but still some people, some producers, would sometimes they oh well you if it, you wouldn't do it on TV you shouldn't do it here and all this stuff but nobody ever said that to Brody and maybe because they knew he just didn't give a fuck and like or his stuff was just so entertaining <laughs> no that people actually just appreciate it but holy crap constant there I have a clip of me and Rusev I'm not sure if it was a three way or just I think it was me and Rusev versus Bludgeon Brothers. On, on a couple of house shows. <laughs> and uh, subscriber. Day. What's it called? 
We did a thing where like Rusev like R I P underscore Brody Lee. Um Itachi, thank you for that for that sub seven months. Appreciate you, man. Uh thank you for that message as well. But uh so we we do this spot. Rusev like uh planches me onto Bro- uh Rowan on the outside. And so he's kinda looking at us on the ramp. And Brody like the whole the spot was literally just like Rusev puts me to the outside on top of Rowan. Here comes Harper, you know, like whatever. Bip Harper and then drop him with the kick. I come off and then we go into like a false finish or something like that. But uh, in the, I wish I had a longer clip, but I don't. Literally, so Rusev puts me to the outside and in the ring, bludgeon brother Luke Harper is literally walking like this. Like a mummy. All the way across. 20 feet across the ring. Like, I'm gonna get you, Bruce. Like, stepping, kicking his legs up. Like, the cartoon, I'm sneaking up on you thing. And I'm like, this is for like 4,000 people. I'm like, it was so freaking good. Um, Just every... I remember one tour... They spent the entire tour trying to get Glenn, a.k.a. Kane. Because I think it was Wyatt's versus... I think it was the one with Wyatt's versus Kane and uh, American Alpha. And Harper spent the entire tour. They wrestled them all tour, like all eight, eight or nine shows. Harper, I think, the whole time tried to get Kane to do a pose off in the middle of the match. To get him to flex, to get him to flex on him. Um, and Kane, Kane didn't because Kane was kind of one of those, uh, what do you call it? Kane was one of those guys who was kind of like Undertaker and, you know, was always protected, kind of protected his game, didn't get, unless it was with Daniel Bryan, he never really got like too silly as it were. And, uh, he, man, he refused 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 all tour long all tour long and then the last day of the tour can't the shortest little flex i've ever seen but uh (laughs) he got him between that and doing lucha spots with chad gable and you i don't know if people saw gable's uh instagram spot or instagram post uh, talking about it. It was when he, when he talks about ridiculous spots again, same tour. They, uh, Oh my God. They wanted it. They did a Lucha opening spot, Lucha spot. And they added to it every single night, every single night they added. So it was like, <laughs> you know, like whatever it was something to drop down, you know, Lucha roll over, arm drag like reverse something uh i think brody did a roll a, a lucha roll over gable and then some kind of head scissor i don't know if brody ever gave a head scissor to gable i it wouldn't surprise me if they did um it was so he did he struck the dana poses the dana brook like and not just like like he would do like the tap the weight spin the hands like or whatever. Oh my God. He, he would do that up in the corner, like on his entrances, just to pop the boys, um, in the back. Never, never afraid. Oh, doing an entire match as Hulk Hogan while he was blue Harper. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> um, Nice. So that's how work <laughs> working the Andre Battle Royal with Brody. Uh, that was in twenty. Yeah. So that the one I worked with him that I remember was twenty seventeen in Orlando, and I think I kept sticking with him for a little while in it because I think we both. I don't get so I love Jinder Mahal. I do. Uh. But especially at that time, because I think he, that was that was actually right before his title run, and I think he was really trying to get over, trying to uh, kind of show the boss what's what. So he was when you worked at Jinder, he 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 hit 
pretty pretty snug. Let's put it that way. And in a battle royal, um, what's it called? In a battle royal, like I, it's WrestleMania, so you do you do go the a little bit a little bit extra. You do go a little bit more. It's awesome. Uh, but it's a battle royal, so nobody's really watching your punches. That so you know, you're not really going. Ugh. And nailing someone because why? Why hurt each other when there's 30 guys in the ring? You know what I mean? Uh, so it was, it's a lot of kind of, uh, what's it called? You, you kind of, you turn for, away from the camera and you just work or you just try to wait for your spot and all this stuff. But Jinder, Jinder was feeling good. He had his, his spot with Rob Gronkowski um, and stuff to go for. So he, he was fired up. So I think at two different points throughout the match, I think I'm working with, I think I was working with Brody or maybe somebody else. But I kind of, I separated. And so I went over to Jinder and like I hit him and he just turns around and like, shoot, kicks me in the gut. And I'm like, oh. And I walk over and I remember I just turned away and I walked over to Brody, um, who I think, I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, stiff. He goes, he goes, oh yeah. <laughs> he goes, oh yeah. He goes, why do you think I stayed over here the whole time? He goes, let's just, he goes, let's just, let's just stick together until you have to go. Um, <laughs> and we both, we, we both just like worked in a corner, like, oh, I'm going to try to throw you over. Oh, I'm going to try to throw you over. Um, <laughs> I just waited until I had to get like thrown out of the ring. But man, it was, uh, it was just really funny because we we both that's like the only story I have from that battle royal, but it uh, it is one that sticks out for sure. It was just something to tweet. When was the last time I did? It was September. Um, I actually, I shared it on my. Uh, oh, I, I didn't share all of it. I mean the. We were joking about something, and uh, the last thing he said to me was, "Luckily, you're very intelligent." Uh, so he 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 was putting me over, um, and that was the that was the last thing he, I got to say to him. Um, but it, uh, it was a fun. He was um, <clears throat> he was somebody I reached out to a lot, just talking about like what to do on the indies. I, I, in fact, I even, I stole his comeback on my, in, on my first match back in the indies. Um, and I told him, uh, where, where is it? I was like, Hey, I did, I did. I stole part of your old comeback So He goes, Oh, he goes, Oh, I saw, I go, <laughs> um, I said, well, it's a great way to get moving around without having to bump anyone too much. Cause I remember I took his comeback a few times on his, uh, on his kind of his solo run when we were working together and, uh, it was pre- it's a pretty easy comeback. And, it, and I'm like, yeah, you don't have to bump anyone around a lot. So that's why I used it. And I'll just goes, he goes, well, whoa, whoa. He goes, oh, I tell that goon to bump whoever you're working unless they're, unless they're the promoter bump them. <laughs> that was his, uh, that was his, uh, his motto. Unless they're the promoter bump them. It was, uh, oh, oh, always the consummate, always the consummate salty brother was he. I haven't seen that yet. I should, I should, I want to watch it really bad. It's, it's hard. It's therapeutic to watch, um, stuff, but it's really pictures are one thing I don't know why I'm ha- I'm having a really hard time watching video uh I think it just makes it too real and I know it's real but I don't want to know it's real everybody be talking about how 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 kind John was to everybody and just caring about people and texting people, um, checking on them, just being a good, a 
fucking person. It's it's so funny. It's so stupid, and and uh, and silly. But it's like you you kind of you kinda, at least like for me like I have this weird weird totally stupid moment. Um, this weird stupid moment of like like totally misplaced jealousy which is like everybody talking about you're like man like i thought i thought me and him were good friends it's it's like when you're a little kid you're like no that's that's my friend he's not your friend he's my friend and you have this moment and you're like and but then you look around and you see and you're like and that's when you like you truly realize like he was everybody's friend you know what i mean like every everybody's friend and not and like friend i'm saying friend not colleague there because in wrestling there's so many like colleagues work buddies the guys that you know you're you're friendly with and you you might shoot a text to but you really don't you don't talk about your families you don't talk about this you don't talk about that you don't go to them when you're frustrated kind of i'm talking about friends and most of us have only a few I can speak to that personally. Most of us only have a few of those in the, in the wrestling business. And, uh, to see like that he was that to so many, God, I can only imagine this dude's phone. Um, cause he was, he was like that with a lot of people. I don't know how many people he kept in his considered in his like close, close circle, but God, he probably like, I have pretty much two circles. It's like, I've got my close friends from in wrestling, which are probably, four or five people. And then there's kind of just everybody else outside of that. who are like, Hey, I'm, I'm very, I'm cool with everybody. And then there's like, and that's it. He must've had like his really tight guys, you know, guys he was texting every day. Then like guys he was texting maybe once a week. Then when, like, cause every, he was friends, friends, friends with so many people and like brought people into his world. Like his family is friends are friends with us too. His wife, Amanda, is like friends with so many, so many of the wrestlers herself. Like she's, she's better friends with Tyler Breeze than, than I am. I think she's, she's better friends with Tyler Breeze than, than John was. Um, I think, I think, well, I mean, that's not hard. You know, John hated Tyler Breeze, but not really. Uh, it's like the rage inducing it's the thing that makes you angry at life is like a lot of people in, in eulogy and in, in memoriam, sometimes like even like this, like right after people pass, there's that, that way. And, and you know what, in the immediate aftermath of, of losing anyone, I get it. You kind of, you memorialize them and every, everything we bring up just the good. And we, uh, we just kind of talk about that. We don't need to get in, to, oh, they were complicated or this or that or good and bad. It, in the immediate aftermath, it's we just bring on the good. Um, but, but, but with John, it was all good. And it's not, it is not like a romanticism or a, a just a memoriam and just looking at it with rose colored kind of glasses and just like, just saying the nice things cause he's gone and everything like that. It's people said that when he was alive and that's really hard to say. Um, it's not an exaggeration. It's not a, dramatization it's not you know hyperbole any of the things you hear read or see are just the way it was in many ways the way it is there's no you know yeah it's not a shit it's not a sugar coating kind of thing. Um, I don't know. I just, I need, I need people to know that. Cause I know sometimes it's like, we, we all talk about those we've lost. 
with reverence and everything, of course, but like with John, it's just like, there's no, there's no stretching to do that. There's no, you don't have to dust color it up. You don't have to brighten it up. And you know, you don't, you, you don't have to pick out the good moments. Cause there were only good moments. Every single moment was good. Every single moment was good with him. Um, luckily, there's so many people around him that love that family. And we will, it's not, it can't, of course, can't be the same, obviously but who will love we we as a community will love that family as best we can like i guess not, not not as much as john did that's an impossibility for any of us if any of us love our families or loved ones as much as john loved his if we any of us are capable of that we are very lucky people And if you are able to be loved the way John loves his family, you are a very lucky person. You are ve- you are incredibly blessed and lucky. I hope you have that in your life or that you find it. Because it's something inspiring to see. Um, yeah. I appreciate all of you appreciate I, if I could leave on you know hug your loved ones close I mean we've seen how crazy the world can be and the things that can happen this year with everything that's going on but you know this wasn't that either and so you never know and I'm not trying to be a downer but just hug them close Tell, tell, I can't tell you how many wrestlers I reached out to, um, and reached out to me just saying, just to say, I love you. Cause we don't say it enough. And it's true. Like I, I, I couldn't tell you how badly I wish I would have had another conversation with him. I feel lucky enough that I was able to talk to him in September. God, but I, God. So yeah, tell, tell the people you love that you love them. Every day, if you can, or whenever you, whenever you see them or talk to them when you can. All right. Raise a thought, a prayer for the, for, for John and his and for his family, think about him tonight and in the, in the coming weeks. I love you guys too.